In this video, let's work through some examples for the polar decomposition. Let's consider a linear transformation A between finite dimensional spaces. Under a fixed basis, it has a rectangular matrix representation. The first step is to diagonalize A star A using the spectral theorem. The diagonal matrix contains all the eigenvalues of A star A. The eigenvalues may be written in the descending order. Assume the first k eigenvalues are non-zero, and the remaining n minus k eigenvalues are zero. This means that in general, A star A is not necessarily invertible. Here V1, V2, up to Vn, are the corresponding eigenvectors, written as column vectors. They form an orthonormal basis for Cn. And V1 star, up to Vn star, are the conjugate transpose. They are written as row vectors. With these notations, A star A is written as a weighted sum of rank 1 orthogonal projections. There are only k terms in the summation, since the last n minus k eigenvalues are zero. Next, define the polar of A as the square root of A star A. This is done by taking the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of A star A. The diagonal entries, lambda 1 up to lambda k, and the zeros, are the singular values of A. The polar of A has the spectral decomposition, written as a weighted sum of rank 1 projections as well. We need to define the so-called pseudo-inverse of the polar. The reason is that the polar of A is in general not invertible, because of the zero singular values. The pseudo-inverse means that we only take the inverse of the non-zero singular values, and leave out the zero entries in the diagonal. This gives a spectral decomposition of the pseudo-inverse of the polar of A. Next, the partial isometry W is given by A times the pseudo-inverse of the polar. Alternatively, by inserting the formula for the pseudo-inverse, W is written as a weighted sum of rank 1 operators, but not rank 1 projections. The reason is that each AV is a column vector of length M, and V star is a row vector of length N, so the rank 1 operator is in fact an M by N matrix. Finally, the polar decomposition of A is W times the polar of A. Remember we have the spectral decomposition of the polar of A, as a weighted sum of projections. W is a partial isometry from the range of the polar of A onto the range of A. It will be helpful to check that W star W is the projection onto the range of the polar. On the other hand, W W star is the projection onto the range of A. In this first example, the matrix A is 3 by 2, and the adjoint is 2 by 3. This gives A star A as a 2 by 2 matrix. Notice that the sum of the columns is 9, 9, and the difference is 1, minus 1. This gives the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The eigenvectors are normalized. Define the singular values of A. Lambda 1 equals 3, lambda 2 equals 1. Then the polar of A has the following spectral decomposition. Insert lambda 1, lambda 2, v1, and v2. Because the eigenvectors are normalized by the constant 1 over square root of 2, in each of the rank 1 projections, there is a constant 1 half. Then the polar of A is the 2 by 2 matrix 2, 1, 1, 2. It is positive and self adjoint. For the pseudo-inverse, we use the spectral decomposition. This also gives a 2 by 2 positive self-adjoint matrix. In this particular example, the polar of A is invertible, so the pseudo-inverse is the same as the inverse. This means we could take the inverse directly, but in general, one would need to use the first approach. For the partial isometry W, we get the 3 by 2 matrix. Lastly, this is the polar decomposition of A, as a product of two factors, a partial isometry times a positive self-adjoint operator. Does this factorization make sense? One thing we could check is that W star W is a projection. In this case, it is the projection from C2 onto the range of the polar of A. The range here is the span of the two column vectors. These two vectors are linearly independent. 
so they span the entire space C2. Therefore, the projection is just the identity operator, which is what we have. What about WW star? It is supposed to be the projection from C3 onto the range of A. But the range of A is the span of these two column vectors. They are linear independent and span a two-dimensional subspace where the second coordinate is zero. That corresponds to WW star as it kills the second coordinate and leaves out the first and third coordinates. Let's look at another example. Here A is 5 by 3. We write down the transpose and A star A. The next step is to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A star A. Note that this matrix is block diagonal, so the calculation can be simplified. Here are the eigenvalues in the descending order, along with the corresponding eigenvectors. Note that mu3 is 0, so A star A is singular. The singular values are lambda1, lambda2, lambda3, and lambda3 equals 0. We then use the spectral decomposition to find the polar of A. Substitute lambda1, lambda2, v1, v2 into this expression and get this 3 by 3 matrix. In this example, it has a zero singular value, so the pseudo inverse is not the same as the inverse, which does not exist. We use the spectral decomposition for the pseudo inverse of the polar. A simple calculation gives this 3 by 3 matrix. Then the partial isometry W is A times the pseudo inverse of the polar. It is given by a 5 by 3 matrix. Finally, the polar decomposition is the product of a partial isometry and a positive self adjoint operator. This is the polar decomposition obtained. It is straightforward to check that the polar part is positive self adjoint. Does the W make sense? Let's write down W star W. It is supposed to be an orthogonal projection. In this example, it should be the projection from C3 onto the range of the polar. Looking at the polar part, we see the first two columns are linear dependent. Both are scalar products of the vector 1, 2, 0. Therefore, the range of the polar is spanned by these two vectors. It is a two-dimensional subspace of C3. Note these two vectors are orthogonal. Now we may write down the projection and compare that with W star W. It is the sum of two orthogonal projections corresponding to the two column vectors in the range of polar. This is indeed the same as W star W. Let's also check WW star. It is supposed to be the projection from C5 onto the range of A. In the matrix A, the first two columns are linearly dependent. This means the range of A is the span of these two vectors. It is a two-dimensional subspace of C5. Again, the two vectors are orthogonal. So let's write down the projection from C5 onto the range of A and compare that with WW star. Using the fact that the two spanning vectors are orthogonal, this is equal to the sum of two rank 1 projections. Lastly, this is indeed equal to WW star.